Well, folks, we're back. It's the 55th annual AEA Convention and Trade Show. The uh, Well, you know, you look down the hall and there's just a tremendous amount of people working back and forth, going from one thing to another. And as we said uh, time and time again, this convention is where all the really cool stuff happens. And boy, is that true this year in particular. Um, real pleased to have some time here to speak to an old friend. We used to talk down in Vero Beach when you're uh, otherwise employed running yet another company that was doing really great things at the time and so forth. But talk about taking on amazing challenges. One of the 600 pound gorilla brands that brought GA into prominence decades ago and for such a long period of time was Bendix King. And Bendix King, I mean, it owned the business. It was uh, the stereotypical 600 pound gorilla within the, G the GA timeframe. Well, things changed a bit. Market shifted, aviation's gone through a number of cycles, and you've got this amazing job to bring Bendix King back to prominence. And I'm one, good on you, two, right guy for the job, and three, can I help? This just sounds like a cool <laughs> job. Kevin Gould, tell me what's happening. Well, thanks, Jim. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, really pleased to be with Bendix King. Uh, all of us, anybody that's in general aviation knows the name. And uh, it's got this very rich history of great products. Uh, the brand is still very strong, uh, both domestically and internationally. And you, you just can't get in an airplane these days, uh, particularly some of the, the ones that have been around for a while, without seeing Bendix King yep. products in the panel. No question about it. I mean, we grew up with aviation. We grew up with the Cessnas and the Pipers and the Beaches. And we grew up with Bendix King. So uh, that's a tremendous foundation to build upon, especially in an industry right now that is on the bubble for true transformation. I mean, we've watched the model that we had and it's failed. It's, it's gone, it's over with. Not that the, there was anything wrong with the model overall, it's just society change, business change, economy change, government change, things changed. We've got to put it aside and build something new. So you have this amazing opportunity. I mean, talk about being handed the keys to the toy store. This is just too cool. I mean, it was either that or take over Playboy, I guess, but what a great <laughs> job. Uh, I know that a lot of this is still in process, but how do you build Bendix King for the future? Well, the first thing that we need to do is think through the product plan, and we've been doing that, working very hard on it. Uh, it's an interesting time to be in avionics, particularly in general aviation. Uh, there are a lot of changes taking place. You know, maybe 15 years ago, we started seeing GPS really uh, available in uh, general aviation. And then over the last decade, it was glass panels. And now there's other things happening. There's um, a, a lot of portable uh, apps on iPads that you can get in the cockpit now. And we're, we're always working to make pilots better informed, make them safer pilots, give them more information to work with as they uh, fly the aircraft. So we think that there's uh, um, some great opportunities on the product landscape. And while we're not, uh, we're not announcing anything right now at this show, uh, stay tuned because we will have some uh, very interesting announcements. Just between you and I, we can turn the cameras off. Just tell me everything. <laughs> <laughs> not going to happen? Not going to happen, uh, Jim, but uh, I wish I could. I try so hard. <laughs> well, that being the case, uh, I've watched you put together a team. And that's got to be possibly the most critical aspect of this because this is not going to happen without the right people. Uh, who have you brought into this and why? So um, one of our foundational rules in, in uh, rebuilding Bendix King is to staff it with a leadership team that are avid GA pilots. And so the first uh, gentleman that we hire is a guy named Roger Jollis. Mm -hmm. And Roger's a, a very active pilot. He joined us in November and he's the vice president of marketing. Okay. Uh, next person we uh, added was a gentleman named Tim Bangert, and Tim is a VP of sales, very, very active pilot. Um, and then the next two pieces that uh, we're filling in, we need a VP of engineering and a VP of customer support, and we're actively recruiting for both of those. Boy, and, and the customer support position is going to be incredibly critical because the one thing that has, I think in the case of at least two companies in this business, kept their head above water to allow them to pursue the projects that they needed to undertake was the fact that they put a lot of effort into customer service. Yes. And I think you know both of them real well. We're talking about Aspen and Avidyne. Uh, Aspen right from the get-go and Avidyne who, you know, admittedly had some problems with it at one point, got back on the game and it's, it not only saved their company, but it gave them the breathing room to go out and be 
ultra competitive and, and, and frankly uh, be one of the other potential 600 pound gorillas. So uh, I'm glad to see that's going to have VP level support. You bet. Uh, what does this company, this renewed company based on such an amazing foundation, have to do with the future from a standpoint of what will be different? So, um, one of the things that's of great value to us and our being part of Honeywell is we've got access to intellectual property from avionic systems that are in upper levels of the Business right. Ave and Air Transport. And so, for instance, in the KSN 770 that we're developing, the FMS in that comes from the Apex systems. And so okay. you, you get the power of a, of a finely developed system in a general avionics product, and a general aviation avionics product. And, and we're going to be doing more of that, leveraging it into our new product line. So I think that's a, a great advantage. The other thing to think about is that and when it comes to general aviation, we're a B to C marketplace. It's it's not businesses selling to businesses necessarily. No. We're selling to consumers, right. and that takes a, a different approach, a different attitude, distribution through the dealership network, um, and a different way of really relating to your customers. And so we're working very hard on that and recrafting the way that we interface with our customers to correspond with that B to C nature of the market. Well, it also means when you're dealing directly with the consumer that they've got to be able to look at your company with some sense of confidence. Mm -hmm. This industry is riddled with, hey, I've got a great new Mockbuster Thunder Crunch 2000, give me $5,000 down and six months from now, I'll give you the rest of everything you wanted. And next thing you know, you know they've got these little notices up on the door and they're long gone. So building a foundation of, of trust uh, has to be, you know, one of the critical factors that you're going to be working with along the line, but it certainly doesn't hurt having, you know, the BK name to go by. I mean, it's it's got to be, you know, it, it's got to be one of those things that impresses somebody with, oh yeah, they're going to be here for a while. Yeah, yeah, and and that's what uh, being part of Honeywell is is great in that respect because we've got financial stability and financial resources, so that's that's really good. Oh, wait, financial stability and financial resources, this is aviation, does not compute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is kind of a new concept yeah. in the GA marketplace. I'm not quite sure we can, we can absorb all that at once. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's that, but it's, it's more than that. It's this rich history of uh, having products that people respect and know for the quality and reliability. I, I can't tell you how many people have come up to me in the last nine months and said, let me tell you a story about this Benix King product that I had, or this King Radio, or this Silver Crown. And they, and they talk about how reliable and, and the high level of quality built into those products. I know that I went out uh, recently and I flew in, uh, it was a 1974 Aero. And it had what I believe are the original KX 170 radios in it, and and you know they're old. They'd been used. They'd had almost 40 years of use, and the bezels were worn and the knobs yeah, were worn. But, but they'll I'll tell still you, be working even after the cockroaches I, are dead. You, <laughs> you know, know, I <laughs> dialed them they in. Don't, they don't fail. And, and the sound quality was so clear, and the radio signal was so strong, and that's the kind of tradition of products that we uh, expect to carry on with. Outstanding. Well, that's that's a good note to, to work on from there. Now. You've run a GA manufacturer. You understand what kind of travails this industry has gone through and, and how tough it is out there, and, and worse than that, how much turmoil there is in an industry that really doesn't know what's going to what it's going to look like a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. How do you plan for that? And, and if you can even answer that question, more important, how do you craft what's going to happen over the, I mean, one of the things we talk about in transformation, it's a process everybody's got to be involved in. Yeah. You've got to all have a part of it. Uh, what's the old uh, catch-22 line, uh, everybody's got to share. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's this incredible opportunity to be a part of the future, but the process by which you are just has to be mind-boggling. You know, there's there's two interesting things going on. One of them is the regulatory, the, the whole advent of next-gen and ADSB. And ADSB out is going to let you fly in the airspace, and ADSB in is going to provide a certain le level of information that may have been more difficult or more expensive to get in the past. So basically, weather and traffic is going to be widely available if you participate in uh, ADSB. So that provides some opportunities from a regulatory standpoint. But just on the market, there's about 300,000 airplanes that there would be class one and two uh, GA airplanes in the world. 
and, um, and, and they last a long time. They are very well built, most of them in the 60s and 70s. Right. They're very well built, and um, we think that there's a great opportunity to, to continue to address that market. Mm -hmm. And so we see that, that that's an area that we're going to focus on, and we think that's going to provide great opportunities as we go forward. The, the market as it stands right now is pretty much going to be retrofit for the foreseeable future because OEM, one, what is what there is of it is pretty well committed and there isn't a whole lot of what there was left anyway. Yeah. Uh, so that being the case, one, the customer support issues come in, but it, it, it takes something new and innovative for people to uh, part way with a dollar, especially in a tough economy. We've watched certain products emerge on the scene and become very popular because they really were game changers and they were exciting and they're interesting. And what I've seen so yeah. far, for instance, with KSN 770 has been just you know salivating in a number of different ways. But even that process for you has been a partnership. You're working mm -hmm. with a number of folks from throughout the industry. Yep. How critical is that product going to be for you? The KSN 770 is going to be a tremendous product and we're very excited to get it out. Um, last week at Sun and Fun, we had a lot of very positive response. We're getting a lot of great inquiries about the product, and we think that that's going to be kind of our first uh, one out of the gate as Bendix King. Um, but we've got a number of others lined up behind it, and uh, while I'm not ready to talk about the specifics today, uh, rest assured, there's Sorry. going to be some uh, very exciting news uh, throughout the course of this year. The willingness that you've had to work with supposed competitors, mm -hmm. that's I've watched this in the last year just show up with a couple of uniquely positioned companies. Uh, is that something we're going to see more of? I mean, it, it, it would seem, uh, especially with a background from Honeywell, there's always been this institutional mindset of we got to do it all by ourselves. And yet there's such genius in this industry that uh, the opportunity to uh, work together and, and build on markets and, and for everybody to do what they do best seems to be you know, the best of all possible worlds. We see a lot more collaboration, do you think? You know, I think so. You just said uh, for everybody to do what they do best, and I think that's the key, is we've each got relative strengths, and to the extent that we can pair up and have complementary strengths in working together, there's an opportunity for us to go out and, and really serve the customer base better. I mean, that's the whole key here, is to have better and safer products in the hands of the flying public. Well, I'll tell you what, we'd love to see it happen. The competitive aspect, I, we have one company that's been dominant for quite some time, and now there's a number of companies that are not only being ultra competitive with that company, but they are, there's no question that everybody's starting to look over their shoulder again. But our, and while that may not be good if, if you're the guy at the top of the hill looking down at everybody going after you, what has happened though with the industry is that the more competition there's been in this industry, the, the more the industry has benefited. The ultra competitive nature at various times in GA and especially in avionics has just been the best times we've seen in those areas. And in particularly in avionics because if there is a more innovative aspect of aviation than avionics, I'd like to see what it is. We don't see this kind of change in power plants. Right. We don't see this kind of uh, change in, in the manufacturing environment. We sure don't see it in regulatory. Uh, it's just uh, an extraordinary thing for me to see right now this mindset at this time. W what do you think? You know, when competition intensifies, consumers win. Bingo. And so I think this is a great time. Doesn't scare you though? Uh, no, I think it's extremely healthy. And oh I God, that's smart. And, and here's, here's another aspect. Those 300,000 class one and two GA airplanes that yeah. I described out in the fleet, yeah. two thirds of those have current fair market values of less than $100,000. Now you think about the propensity of that large group to right. spend, and, and we've got to offer products that are attractive to them. And, and you know, large expensive products aren't going to be what they're looking for. And so I think there's a real opportunity with good strong competition to serve that consumer base. Well, I've really appreciated the time you've been able to spend with us. I know you've been uh, walking around seeing uh, what's what's available here and what you've got to compete against in the future. But before we go to break here, uh, we've been asking each of the folks that we've been talking to uh, for their outlook on not just the future of aviation, but what they're seeing here at AEA 2012. Your thoughts on the overall future of aviation and uh, AEA 2012 in particular. 
You know, I, I think probably the most significant thing that's going on right now is the uh, iPad apps that are available in the cockpit. I mean, virtually every pilot that I know oh, yeah. that is progressive is using something. It's all here. And and I'm sure you've got it loaded I, I on I got yours. them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. And and I think this is all part of being uh, providing the, the uh, pilots with more useful and, and intuitive information that they can use while flying the airplane. And I think that it's a, it's a real trend in the future and it's one that I'm really uh, going to enjoy watching and, and being a part of. So anyway, I think that that's an exciting thing that's going on. Um, general aviation, I think, is going to continue to, to be um, on a rebuild. Um, it's, it's, it's not going to skyrocket, but it's going to be on a slow, steady upgrade. Um, I think that there's a lot that's going to happen in um, light sport and experimental. Yep. And I think that's great uh, seating ground for a lot of the young pilots that we want to bring along. And I think there's also a lot of really neat things going on in training right now. And uh, some of the players in that space have come out with some innovative oh, new yeah. approaches. And I'm really encouraged by that. <laughs> Great so, stuff. Yeah, so anyway, I'm, I'm encouraged, I'm bullish, and I'm really looking for a great future for Bendix King. It's, it's going to be good. Well, we're excited to watch uh, what you're going to be building from here on out. I can't wait till you can tell me what's really going on. <laughs> uh, Kevin, we wish you the best of luck, and more important, we look forward to talking to you and uh, interfacing with you folks as uh, your products and plans are made known. Great. So, folks, for the moment, we'll take a break here, uh, and I think we're going to be talking to Ash Fidge. Garden Avia, Guardian Avia, okay, we're going to try this three times fast here. Guardian Avionics, who has an iPad-capable uh, device that I think is going to be kind of cool and going to change a few things for some folks. And we'll answer that really obnoxious question you get from all your backseaters. Are we there yet? So, for the 55th Annual AEA Convention and Trade Show, we'll take a break. We'll be back with you in just a few moments. This is Aero News and Aero TV. Aero TV's live coverage of the 55th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. 